What's up, travelers? It's Liz and Eric from Means to Travel, and right now we're in the car on our way to St. Michael's Mount in Cornwall. So we've started the day a little bit late. Um, the the low tide in order to get to the mount was supposed to be, I believe, like 9:30 to 12:30 today, roughly, um, and it is 10:44 now. So um, we're probably going to have about an hour to race over to St. Michael's Mount um, and get some great photos before the tide starts rolling in and then the mount gets cut off from the mainland. So we are really crossing our fingers, all is going to go well with that. And for those who don't know, St. Michael's Mount is actually very similar to the um, Mont Saint-Michel in, in France where it's this island off the coast. And at high tide, it's an island, and at low tide, it's connected by a really narrow causeway. Um, so it's kind of really cool. Um, and we want to walk across that causeway. <laughs> so fingers crossed we're going to get there soon. All right, see you guys in a bit. Parking at St. Michael's Mount can be very competitive, especially during high season. Make sure to arrive early to the car park so you can find a spot. Plus, it's a bit of a walk from the lot all the way to the causeway. Okay, as Liz was saying earlier, we have made our first stop here in Cornwall, and it is St. Michael's Mount, which is a lot like the uh, Mont Saint-Michel in France. It has a causeway that leads from the mainland to the island, and it's only around for a few hours each day. I think today it was like 9.30 to 1.30 p.m. And uh, yeah, we're excited to hopefully get over there and see some stuff, even if we can't get into the castle. Okay, you guys, we've made it all the way to St. Michael's Mount, and then we realized that you need to get tickets in advance <laughs> in order to come here, especially during coronavirus time. So as you can see on this sign here, you need to purchase tickets online. And we are members of the National Trust, so we should be able to do that pretty easily um, whenever the next time we come is, because unfortunately they're sold out for today. So what we can do is kind of walk across this causeway a little bit, but in order to get onto the island itself, you need to have a ticket. So. I guess we're just gonna be hanging out, taking some photos. Let's go. Okay, so we have made it, as Liz said, to St. Michael's Mount here in Cornwall. And it is gorgeous and stunning, and this cobble causeway is really cool. Um, and as she said, we can't get onto the island, but we are walking across, and we're going to you know, go as far as we can before we have to turn back because we don't have a ticket. And yeah, this is a really cool spot. I, I think it's stunning. And I've never been to uh, Mont Saint-Michel in France, but I imagine that this is kind of similar. So pretty cool. Okay, we keep mentioning how similar this is to Mont Saint-Michel, so let's dive into that. On the other side of the English Channel off the coast of France is Mont Saint-Michel, which is another tidal island about four times larger in acreage with a large abbey sitting atop. St. Michael's Mount was built on this British title island as a counterpart when Edward the Confessor gifted this island to the Benedictine Order of Mont Saint-Michel, and the church here became a priory to that abbey in Normandy. King Henry V dissolved the priory connection to Mont Saint-Michel during one of the wars with France, and thus the church here became a secular chapel in 1424. This is an absolutely stunning location. And even without tickets to get onto the island, it's totally worth a visit. The present day partnership with the National Trust began in 1954, when Francis Cecil St. Aubin, a baron, gave most of St. Michael's Mount to the National Trust, along with a large endowment fund. As part of the deal, his family was able to secure a 999-year lease to inhabit the castle and also help to manage the public's viewing of the historic rooms. His family, the St. Aubins, have owned the mount since 1659 and the descendants of the original buyer, aka the Lord's St. Levans, continue to be seated at the mount. Okay, as you can see, the causeway is now underwater and so you can't get to the island anymore unless you go via boat, which I think only the residents do. But the beach is still open, and it's still a lovely, lovely day. 
Okay, so we are just a little bit away from the St. Michael's Mount, and we have stopped to get fish and chips and a little bit of beer at the King's Arm. Yes, I'm using ketchup. <laughs> Looks pretty substantial, pretty good. Excited for this. Travelers checking in stateside here. We didn't end up filming a lot more after going to the King's Arms for lunch when we were at St. Michael's Mount, just because I kind of started not feeling super well, and so we just went back to our Airbnb. But honestly, I just wanted to hop on and say how incredibly pleased and delighted I was to be able to go. That was my number one thing that I wanted to do on a visit to Cornwall. It was our first time there, and it was like just my bucket list item. That is the thing I really wanted to see. So it was really cool just to be able to go and cross the causeway and see the mount itself. Even though we didn't get tickets to get in, I'll definitely be back though because I want to see the rest of the things there are to see there. So if you liked this video, as always, please press the thumbs up down below and also make sure to press that red subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of our upcoming Cornwall vlogs that we're going to be posting on this channel and all of our other travel videos that we post on this channel as well. Thanks everybody for watching. Cheers. Happy travels. Bye. Okay you guys, we made it all the way to St. Michael's. Okay you guys, we made it all the way to St. Michael's Mount. Hey travelers, don't forget to subscribe and let's hang out more. Here are some links to other helpful travel videos on my channel and press that notification bell so you don't miss any new and awesome travel videos to come.